Hey, Psych2Goers. Recently, we made a video about seven things you should keep private. Some of you shared your thoughts with us, and today we'd like to acknowledge them. You told us about the types of situations in which you shouldn't keep to yourself, but instead should share with those you trust. These may include difficulties in your family, relationships, and workplace. And while sometimes some things are best kept private to avoid unnecessary problems, we do encourage you to speak up about serious issues you may be facing. Talking about those problems in a safe setting, like with a mental health professional or a close friend, could help you take the weight off your shoulders. So here are four things not to keep private. Number one, abuse in the family or relationships. It's common to have disagreements with your partner, friends, and family. Maybe you're annoyed that they don't help around the house enough. But sometimes when your relationship problems go far beyond chores and minor disputes, it's important to tell someone. As mentioned by Shagun Maria, an Australian psychotherapist, abuse can be a taboo subject, making it very difficult to openly discuss it. You may feel guilty, ashamed, confused, or afraid that people will judge you or won't take you seriously. For these reasons, you may feel like you just can't open up and then you suffer in silence. But by keeping silent, you may be giving your abuser even more power over you. When you talk about it, you shift that power back to you and you allow others to help you with your struggle. Sybil Kuman, a licensed professional counselor in Colorado, suggests that you find someone who you feel is trustworthy enough for you to share your story with. And if you don't feel like people in your life could help you with your situation, you should definitely seek help from professionals whose job it is to help victims of abuse stand back on their feet. Number two, depression or other mental health problems. Even though psychology and mental health is now more accessible than ever before, it's still underestimated, not understood and stigmatized. For these reasons, when you're feeling down, you may just put on a happy mask and pretend you're okay. This is commonly called bottling up your emotions and it can be extremely damaging for your mental and physical health. According to clinical psychologist, Victoria Tarrett, suppressing your emotions, whether it's anger, sadness, grief, or frustration can lead to physical stress on your body. It can affect blood pressure, memory, and self-esteem. So talking about your problems with someone you trust not only helps you get all those negative emotions out of your system, but it can also help fight the stigma that surrounds the topic of mental health. By sharing your experiences, you can show others that they're not alone. This was confirmed by a new study published in the Community Mental Health Journal, which found that young adults who shared their stories about living with mental illness increased their well being and felt less stigmatized. Don't suffer alone. There will always be someone willing to help. Number three, unequal pay or difficult financial situation. Sometimes people are just nosy, especially those you don't know well. They may use your financial situation to shame you if they think you earn too little or mock you out of jealousy if they think you earn too much. With those people, it's best to just let them know that your money is none of their business. But there are situations in which talking about money can actually be important. Even though we live in a modern society, we still haven't solved the problem of unequal pay. For example, Recent data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics in 2020 suggests that women earn significantly less than men, even for the same job. On top of that, managers sometimes take advantage of inexperienced workers and may offer you less than what you should be getting. If you suspect you're earning less than you should, talking about money with your coworkers could help you figure out what you should be paid and allow you to stand up for your rights just make sure you trust them enough so they don't badmouth you in front of your boss. Similarly, if you're struggling financially, it may be good to share your struggles with someone you're close with. It may be embarrassing and difficult to talk about, but if you're struggling so much that you can barely afford food or basic hygiene, your friends would surely be happy to help you out. They may even be able to lend you a few bucks for necessities or help pay for your grocery trip, or maybe even introduce you to job opportunities. And number four, your goals and future plans. Some studies suggest that if you share your goals and dreams with others, you might be less likely to chase them. That might sometimes be true for instances where you're not really 100% sure if that's what you want to pursue. But when it comes to something you're really passionate about, sharing those goals with others could ensure you get the help, connection, and support you need to get on the path to success. But when sharing those dreams, 
pay attention to who you're telling your plans to. A recent 2020 study published in the Journal of Applied Psychology states that you can have greater goal commitment and performance if you tell your goal to someone you believe has higher status than you, or if you truly value that person's opinion. Howard Klein, lead author of that study and professor of management and human resources at The Ohio State University explains, you wanna be dedicated and unwilling to give up on your goal, which is more likely when you share that goal with someone you look up to. So when talking about your goals, make sure you share them with someone you respect. In that way, you'll make sure it won't be just all talk and no action. Do you agree that these things shouldn't be kept private? but shared with someone you like and trust? What are some other things that are best shared with someone? Remember to like, subscribe, and share this video with those who might benefit from it. And don't forget to hit the notification bell icon to get notified whenever Psych2Go posts a new video. The references and studies used in this video are added in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next one. We'd like to thank you for your suggestions and comments. We greatly appreciate what you have to say and we're taking each comment into account. We're always lucky if we're able to teach you something, but it also makes us so happy to learn from your comments, stories, and experiences.